all right so when we are going to look at the calculations on excel there is one thing that is most important that you should understand without an equal sign no calculation will happen so when we look at this spreadsheet as you see it now we are going to focus on the calculations here at the bottom we are going to calculate total amount we are going to calculate the average of the amounts then we are going to calculate the lowest amount highest amount and number of salesmen so we have salesmen for january and they are different amounts according to how they've been selling so i'm going to show you how do you start a calculation on excel so when you are doing any calculation on microsoft excel you need to understand that without an equal sign your calculations will not happen so let's start with total amount when i click here on total amount i need to introduce a calculation so the first thing that you do it's an equal sign like i've mentioned so after putting an equal sign you need to determine or include a function so our function here is to get a total so when you are going to add things together on microsoft excel you use the function sum when i say sum you can see a list of functions is appearing here because i've introduced the function sum so after writing sum i need to tell excel that it needs to add different numbers so if you see here it says adds all the numbers in a range of cells so it means now i need to include those numbers in the brackets so when i open the bracket from the keyboard by holding shift and opening a bracket this is the only bracket that will be recognized by a function so you can't just open any bracket that you want except that one after that you have to highlight all the numbers that should be included in your calculation so after i've done this i can close with the same bracket that i've opened so pressing enter on the keyboard it will give me the total amount now the next thing is for us to determine the average of the same numbers that we have used when we determined the total if I say equals to average, you can see that the pop-up or the drop-down uh, suggested functions, I can also see average. So when we read here, it says this one will return the average, arithmetic mean, of its arguments, which can be numbers or names, arrays or references that contains numbers. So what will happen here is that after choosing the function average when the bracket opens i will include the numbers inside like we did with sum when i close then it will give me the average amount within that range that i've selected now coming to the lowest number when i say equals to the function that will determine the lowest amongst a range of numbers it is called min m i n you can see that the suggested function as the first one on the list is min when i double click it the bracket will open so i want to know or i want this function to return the lowest number for me amongst this range so i will highlight the range and then i close with the correct bracket that I have opened when i press enter it will give me 5000 because that is the lowest amount so now the opposite of mean is going to be when we determine the highest amount which is equals to max which is maximum when i open the bracket i will take the range close the bracket close the bracket press enter it will give me 8400 because that is the maximum amount 
within the range that we have been selecting. Now, when we come to number of salesmen, when we look at salesmen there on our spreadsheet, we can see that there are four. But you can't put four and type it because we need to use a function that will return that four for us. Four is a number. So if I'm going to say equals to, now I want to see how many salesmen we have. There's a function called count. But if I use count, if you look here on the list, there are different count functions. There is count, there is count A, there is count blank, count if, and count ifs. So here on count, the tooltip or a hint that says counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. But when we look at that, salesmen and the statement that we see here, they contradict because that column contains letters or names which are in alphabetical letters. But this statement says count will only work for numbers. Now when I go down to select the second one that says count A, it says counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So we can use that one because it's going to include everything as long as the cell is not empty. So it is not actually looking at the numbers. It is looking at cells which are containing data or information. So I'm, I'm going to use count A. When I open the bracket and I highlight and I close the bracket, then it will give me that four. Now let's look at the one that says percentage sales amount. So when we see a column or a place where we have to return a percentage value according to a number, we know that it's 5,000, but now we need to return a percentage that represents 5,000. So what will happen is that you will never do this percentage column if you are not going to have the total of the numbers. So for us to do this, we will need to see if we have the total amount or the total number that is a total of all the range of numbers in the same column. So what will happen here is that I'm not going to use a function. I'm going to calculate. So when I say equals to, I will click inside that 5,000 and then I divide by. Now when I click that total amount, I can use absolute cell referencing. Absolute cell referencing is when we want that cell that we just selected now to be known throughout all the other cells so that we don't have an error when we autofill. For an example, if I just leave it like this and don't use absolute and divide the two and press enter, I will get a decimal which is going to be a percentage okay but if I autofill then you will see that when I change to percentage like I'm doing now I want it to show as a percentage see, see now we have 168 percent which is not realistic now all these percentages they have to be totaled to make 100 but one one of them now it's more than 100, then it's wrong. So once you see that when you add them together, like now if I autofill this 27,000 going to the right, I'm expecting 100 because this should be 100, all of them when they're added together. So if you get something that is not 100, that is a total of all the percentages, then you know it's wrong. So what I'm going to do, I will do it correctly. This is what you are supposed to do. Equals to, when you click this, you divide by the total. Then you press F4 on the keyboard like this. Now that F4 will turn that division to have dollar signs. It means that when I autofill this answer after I got it, it will use 
the same total amount to divide all the other numbers then i will get a correct answer so when i press enter this is 18 percent for this when i autofill for the others they will give me their percentages going to steven giving me their percentages when i autofill this total so that i can autofill for the total of sales amount percentage it should be 100 so i'm going to change this to be a percentage not currency when i change to percentage it should show 100 there 100 so all these percentages we can remove all the decimals from them i can right click and go to format cells then i choose decimal places i put zero when i click ok there there it is so that is how you do the basic functions or basic calculations on excel by doing them using functions and also calculating please subscribe to my channel click subscribe click the bell notifications so that you get notified when i upload more content thank you for watching